Hey friends, in this video we're going to be talking about what is a data lake house, how does it apply to the delta lake, and why is it potentially better than a data warehouse? Let's get to it. Hello again, my name is Austin Leibel and I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works and we do training on various products from Microsoft like the Power Platform and Azure and one of the questions I keep getting asked in my training events is what is this data lake house I keep hearing all about? Well hopefully this video serves as an introduction into what it is and allows you to better understand exactly how it can be used and is already being used by many organizations across the world. To start with, a data lake house is this new data management architecture that combines both the features of data lakes and data warehouses. But to start with, let's kind of do a deep dive into what's a data lake and what versus a data warehouse. So in order to better understand this, I have this uh, visual on screen. So a data lake house is nothing more than a combination of these two structures. A data warehouse itself is a way to go through and have a centralized repository that stores structured data from various sources, typically for the purpose of business intelligence and reporting. It's designed to support online analytical processing systems or OLAP systems and is optimized for query performance. Data warehouses often use something called a schema on write approach, which means that the data is predefined and structured before being loaded into the warehouse from like an OLTP or an online transactional processing system. And then the other term that we need to know is the data lake. Now we've talked about the data lake quite a bit already inside of this video series on the Delta Lake because it's a central part of it, but the data lake is a large centralized repository as well that allows for organizations to store all types of data, structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data at scale. It is a storage architecture designed to store raw data in its native format without the need for prior structuring or modeling. This means the data lakes can store vast amounts of data from different sources such as databases, social media, IoT devices, and many more, making it possible to use for various analytics and machine learning purposes. So one of the file formats that you can store in a data lake is Apache Parquet. We've already talked about using Apache Parquet inside of the Delta Lake. Uh, but Apache Parquet is a way that we can go through and easily store large files inside of a columnar compressed file format, which is going to reduce our storage footprint inside of our data lake. So data lakes are often used inside of big data environments as there is a need to store and analyze large amounts of data and doing so in a database can get overwhelming. Now the data lake house is going to be this new database management architecture that goes and combines the best features from both the data lake and the data warehouse. Its storage layer is going to be the data lake itself. So we're going to have the data lake with all its scalability, flexibility, cost savings, uh, with the performance and reliability of the data warehouse. Data lake houses often utilize data lake capabilities for enhanced reliability, scalability, and performance for big data workloads. Now, one of the ways it ties into Delta Lakes is the key feature of the Delta Lake being the ACID transactions is something that is present in a data warehouse and by default is not inside of a data lake. That is where Delta Lake can be utilized inside of the data lake house architecture to be able to provide that reliability, the consistency, isolation, durability, atomicity, of all of those different transactions of our data. Now, to help ensure that the data is always accurate and up to date, it's essential for analytical workloads. And overall, Delta Lake provides several different capabilities for uh, that are best suited really inside of that lake house environment. By combining this flexibility and scalability of data lakes with the reliability and performance of the data warehouse, Delta Lake can go through and help organizations derive greater insights from their big data workloads. Now, how the data Data Lake House works at a very high level. Uh, this solution is going to focus on the security and design implementation for practices in the architecture. So we start with our Synapse Spark. That is our way to access a Spark cluster or Spark compute inside of Azure Synapse Analytics. We can go through and extract that data from its raw format. We can take it from a database or something like that, an Azure SQL database, a SQL server on-premises, wherever that data lies, we make that connection with Synapse Spark 
and then we can go and write that data to the data lake. Now, this is often going to be utilized with the delta lake format, that delta architecture to again provide that reliability and consistency. But as we go through and we write that data to the data lake, we are storing that data inside of a storage that is quite a bit cheaper than storing it inside of maybe like an Azure SQL database or a dedicated SQL pool inside of Synapse Analytics. Now, once the data is inside of the data lake, like we can use different governance tools like Azure Purview, Microsoft Purview. Uh, we can use uh, different tools to be able to manage that appropriately. We can apply security to the files inside of the data lake. We can say who has access to go and actually read which files based on that hierarchical structure of the data lake itself. But once we have the ability to have that stored in the data lake, we need to serve it to our users with some sort of tool. And the tool that I would recommend using to do that would be Synapse serverless SQL. There are others as well, but inside of Synapse Analytics, serverless SQL is going to be a way that we can go and write SQL against files that exist inside of our data lake. Whether that be a Parquet file, whether that be a Delta file, we can extract information from that using SQL and using that inside of tools like Power BI, inside of machine learning tools, inside of any sort of analytical tool for yourself. Now, as we start to better understand exactly what the data lake house looks like, one of the ways that we are going to want to do so is by utilizing something known as the data lake house medallion architecture. And the way that works is something like this. So one way of organizing your delta tables inside of this architecture is to use the bronze, silver, gold medallion structure. This medallion architecture describes a series of data layers that denote the quality of data stored in the lake house. So the bronze, silver, gold layering of a data lake house refers to a best practice approach for organizing and managing data within a unified data platform that combines the features of both data lakes and data warehouses. In this approach, data is going to store in three different layers, each with their own purpose and level of refinement. Bronze layer is going to be the raw, unprocessed data layer where data is ingested from various sources and stored in the native format. This layer is typically going to be used for data discovery and exploration and is optimized for low cost storage and high scalability. The silver layer is going to be the intermediate processing layer where data is transformed, cleaned, and standardized. This layer is optimized for query performance and data consistency and is often used for data analysis and reporting. The gold layer is going to be the refined process data layer where data is modeled, aggregated, and optimized for specific use cases. This layer is optimized for performance and data quality and is typically used for business intelligence and advanced analytics. By organizing data in this way, the bronze, silver, gold layering approach enables organizations to effectively manage, utilize their data, and helps ensure that data is accurate, consistent, and accessible to those who need it. It is important to note that the medallion architecture does not replace normal dimensional modeling techniques. You're still going to build out your data lake house uh, on a star schema. You still want to have dimension tables and fact tables that are feeding each other to be able to be best utilized by your business intelligence users inside of something like Power BI. Now, the way that this would typically work is you would extract the data from your original sources, this batch source here, this streaming source, whether this is you know data coming into a SQL server or coming from an IoT device, you can access that and store it inside of the data lake as this raw data layer here. So we have our data stored in the bronze layer, and this can be used in the Delta format if you would like. This can all be utilized in the Delta format if necessary. But once you go through and have stored the data inside of the bronze layer, you want to go through and you want to clean it as part of the ETL process. So we go through, we clean the data, and we still are able to access it with different tools like Synapse Spark or Databricks. And we can go through and also use this layer inside of Power BI. Power BI does not only use uh, the gold layer. We have it here associated with the gold layer because that is one place it could be utilized, but it can actually utilize both the silver and gold layer. Again, the gold layer is going to be where most likely you are going to use a specific set of data that has already been aggregated inside of Power BI or it's been prepared for your users in that workspace. 
Now, hopefully you have a better understanding of exactly how the data lake house works and some of the different architectural components of how that process is. If you're more interested in learning about that, definitely check out some of our on-demand learning content that we have coming up over the next several months because we are going to be dedicating a lot of our workload to better having uh, an understanding of what the data lake house is and what the delta lake is. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video series. This has been a lot of fun for me. We have some great content coming up, but really kind of like this uh, data lake house structure where you're taking the traditional data warehouse and the storage of the data lake and combine the two together to save on cost, uh, to potentially improve performance and things like that. So hopefully you've enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next one.